Hi, my name is Eloise. Gerard and Sigra will be joining us for today's lesson. In the last lesson, we saw that once you have identified a pattern in a sequence of diagrams or numbers, you can describe it using a variable such as n or x or y. In this lesson, we take this idea further to make a very important link between patterns and algebra. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and describe a relationship or pattern between two varying quantities, find the general term for a sequence, and write an equation to describe a pattern. Gerard and Sigra are over at their local community hall. Let's go and see what they're up to. Hello, you two. What are you doing? Oh, hi. It's my sister's 18th birthday party, so we're just doing the seating arrangements. Yeah, but it's proving to be a bit difficult. You see, the only problem is that all the tables are um, trapezium shaped. Oh. What makes things worse is that we only have four tables. The caretaker said we could get us more, but we need to work out how many more tables we need. Hmm. Maybe I can help. Why don't you show me what you have worked on so far? Well, we've realized that one table can seat five people, like this. Voila! And if you join two tables together, we can seat eight, like this. My mom wants us to arrange the tables across the hall in one straight line, and she's expecting around 100 people, so we need to know how many tables we're going to use. So what's the problem? You can see that there's five people at one table and eight people at two tables. We just don't want to draw this whole thing to figure it out. You won't need to draw the whole table seating if you can see a pattern. Perhaps you should add in another table and then look for a pattern. Let's add another table and see how many people will fit around these three tables. But that's 11 people. Every time we add a table on, we're only getting three people. Let's check that with the fourth table. If you're right, then there should be 14 people around the tables. So, four tables will give us 14 people. So you're right. We add three people each time. But we still need to figure out how many tables we need to seat 100 people. I think we need some kind of rule to describe this pattern. Good thinking there. What we need is a link between the number of tables and the number of people who need seating. A useful way to compare the number of people and the number of tables is to put all the information into a table. Here, let me show you. Let's make a column for the number of tables and a column for the number of people. Now, what information can we put into the table so far? We know that five people can sit around one table. For two tables, we had eight people. For three tables, we had 11 people. And for four tables, we can fit 14 people around it. Let's identify the pattern in these numbers. There are several ways to look for the pattern. I'm not sure how to do that. Some of you will prefer to look at the diagrams and some of you might prefer to just work with the numbers we have in the table. I like working with pictures. I actually prefer the tables. They give you the numbers straight away. Well, let's work with both methods. First, I'm going to show you how to use a table of values, and then later we can work with Sigra's pictures. To start, we are going to add a third column to the table and call it pattern. 
I want to use it to record any pattern we find in the table of values. We started with five people at a table. Then when we added a table, this increased by three people. Let's write that as five plus three. Each time we added a table, we increased the number of people by three. So for three tables, we can write down five plus three plus three. For four tables, we can write down five plus three plus three plus three. I'm sure you can see there's a clear pattern in these numbers. Let's simplify what we have here. We can write this one as 5 plus 2 times 3. The fourth one can be written as 5 plus 3 times 3. Let's go back to the pattern of two tables. We could write this as 5 plus 1 times 3. What do you think we could write for the first table that would fit this pattern? I've got this one. Okay, let's hear it. See, we have three times three here, two times three here, and one times three over here. So that means the next one should be no times three. You are absolutely right. It seems you are a numbers person, Gerard. Now let's describe what is happening in this pattern. We're going to use our numbers for four tables to help us. The number of people at four tables will be five plus three times three. So for each pattern, the five stays part of the pattern. Then we take a number one less than the number of tables. 3 is 1 less than 4, and we times by 3. That gives us the number of people. But this problem has a twist to it. We know what number of people we need the seating for, but we don't know how many tables to use. Let's suppose that we use x tables for 100 people. We could write down an equation for this. For x tables, we will use x minus 1 in the equation. So they will be seating for 5 plus x minus 1 times 3 people. This gives us the equation we need. 5 plus x minus 1 times 3 equals 100 people. I hope you recognize this type of equation. It's a linear equation. It shouldn't be too difficult to solve for x in this equation. So, let's do it. We can simplify to get 5 plus 3x minus 3 equals 100. That's 2 plus 3x equals 100. To get x on its own, we need to subtract 2 from both sides to give you 3x equal to 98. Then divide by 3 and x will be 32 and 2 thirds. An answer of 32 and 2 thirds. Surely we can't choose 32 and 2 thirds of a table, can we? Well, obviously my mom is not going to cut up a piece of the table now, is she? To seat 100 people. Come on, we need 33 tables. You're quite right, Sigra. Didn't you say there's another way of working this out? Using diagrams, because I love diagrams. Yes, that's right. For those of you who prefer to work from the diagrams like Sigra, you may have seen the pattern like this. Each diagram has only two people sitting on the ends, whether there are one, two, or three tables. Apart from these positions, there are always three people at a table. Here are three at the blue table, 
three at the red table and three at the green table. So you are starting with two plus three people at the first table, two plus three plus three at two tables, and two plus three plus three plus three at three tables. We could carry on doing this with the diagrams, but I'll leave it to you to try this out. If you complete the pattern, you will find that you get to the same answer of 33 that we found using a table of values. I've been thinking about this. There's no way a long row of 33 tables is going to fit in this small hole. Now that you mention it... My mom's going to be so disappointed, but you're going to have to find another way to set up the tables. While you work that one out, let me recap what we have done so far. First, we identified that Sigra and Gerard needed to find a quick way to work out the number of tables needed to seat 100 guests. By using a table of values and number patterns, we found a link between the two sets of varying quantities. The number of tables and the number of people who can be seated. We identified two different ways of describing this pattern and wrote down an equation that showed the algebraic link between the number of tables and the number of people. We then used this equation to calculate the number of tables needed to seat 100 people. Let's see how Sigra and Gerard are getting along. So, what have you come up with? We figured out that we can use fewer tables if we put two together and seated eight people around it. That way we use our space better and we only need 25 tables. Well done you two. I won't ask you to show us how you worked that one out because I can see you two have your hands full. Well, we'd love to explain, but we really got to get going. We still have to set up this place in time. Okay then. Thanks for letting us take some of your time to do some interesting work with number patterns. Goodbye, enjoy your party. Thanks for helping us figure this one out. Cheerio. Yeah, thanks a lot, eh? Bye-bye. Now it is your turn. Work out how to use 25 tables for 100 people. You could start by making diagrams or you could set up a table of values to find your answer. If you can fit eight people around two trapezoid-shaped tables, show that only 25 tables are needed to seat 100 people if tables were arranged in pairs as shown. Well, that's all for today. Don't miss our next lesson on number patterns when we will use what we have learned today. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>